I went to the museum, the Norton Simon Museum, uh, namely to check out one of my favorite painters that has recently become, because of this class, is Pierre Fouvis de Chavon. Uh, the one name, the painting that I wanted to mainly do for this was the Pastoral Life of St. Genevieve. This specific fellow, Chavon, right here was a Frenchman, and he was one of the foremost classical painters of his time. But he was the main movement that he spearheaded was known as symbolism. And he employed a lot of romanticist styles to his work, and he didn't even want to become a painter, to be honest. He was actually a minor. And his father was a minor too, but then he traveled to Paris in 1844. I mean, Italy in 1844. He was from Paris. And then he came back. And then that's when he decided to be a uh, painter. At this certain museum, this was the painting that I saw life size. It was approximately with like half of this entire. Uh, the thing is, he always did not like to use gritty or realism. He always wanted to have a sort of ethereal and a very mystical kind of dreamlike uh, tone to his work. This was only him at the very start of his career, and he had not found a specific, uh, very confident voice yet. However, the thing that you can see here is for similar things that he would later do. There was a lot of narrow spaces. Especially in the back, if you notice these trees in the background are all very thin, kind of an alien quality to them, as well as the clouds in the skyscape in the in the background. They have a very narrow quality, which adds this kind of surrealist touch to it. And the subject of this specific painting was Saint Genevieve. She was a little girl that was defended by two other saints, Saint Luke and Saint Luke and Saint Oxfier. They basically fainted her because she was responsible for stopping uh, the Hun from invading Paris in the fifth century. And in the front, that's the center panel, and it shows this awe and this wonder kind of magnetic scope to the whole to the whole orchestrated piece. On the left, you can tell there's and the right there's these the lowly feet, the salt of the earth people like the regular fellows. And there's a fisherman on the left triptych panel and on the right there are farmer people. And in the back there's various structures you can tell. Who was actually, this was his later work, The Sacred Grove, 
which he did, and the dream. You can tell this is how him in his zone. This is him as he's showcasing how there's this mystical quality to everything he does, even though they're supposed to be on this uh, regular uh, dirt ball of earth. The, he adds these touches to it, which you can tell, like in uh, you know, life, in some sort of sense, maybe there's something mystical or uh, otherworldly, like the floating people and stuff. So these were the styles he employed. But these were just regular paintings, and for this one, he was employed uh, officially by a government sanctioned to make it specific. It has specific structure, so you have to denote a certain level of importance to each of the three sides. And for these, it was just him more in his, more him, more doing this for his own uh, enjoyment. There was one other museum uh, piece that I liked. It was uh, this one up there on the top right. Uh, that was Van Gogh's mother that he drew. I really liked this one. I've never seen it before. Uh, it was in green. It's the original copy of it. I've never seen it once. And then on the right is me with some girl I took uh, to go to the museum. Uh, and then on the left is the original, no, on the top right is top left. I needed her to photo me at the thing, you know, even though they came up to her and they're like, why are you flashing this uh, camera? And I was like, don't worry about it. <laughs> And that is my favorite painting of the specific individual. That's why I had to do it from the book I read it, and I wanted to feature more of him. And oh, and the uh, museum itself, it had a very somber quality to it, because we went on a cloudy day, and there's a certain garden in the back, uh, around in the back, and it was a cloudy, cloudy kind of uh, horizon, and there was a sun peering through the clouds, which seemed very very epic, and the outside of the museum is surrounded by these statues all around. And Rodan and Henry Moore, the statues that go through the city all around the North Side of the United States, have not been there. Go, and if you go to North Side, then you're seeing an idea. Thank you, John.